Hey, welcome to Reptile. David Kellum again with you this week. We have now moved into the month of June and uh, it's going to start getting hot around here in good old North Mississippi, that's for sure. And uh, this week on Reptile, we've got with us again our Vice Chancellor for Intercollegiate Athletics, uh, Keith Carter. So we've got Keith on the screen. Be talking to him in just a moment. And also uh, from Ole Miss Football Offensive Line Coach Randy Clements. A uh, good visit with uh, Randy as he's going to try to get those big guys ready to go on the offensive side of the football. And Senior Associate AD for Health and Performance, Shannon Singletary, is back with us again this week. And he's been very busy, to say the, the least. And I, I do want to say this at the front end of the show. I interviewed him a couple of nights ago before we got the word that there had been some positive test. And we even said that in the interview that, hey, there may be some people that test positive before this airs. And so I did not go back and re-interview him. But he gives us all the information on what the protocol is and that kind of stuff. We'll talk to Keith about it. we got Keith on here a little bit later than uh, we did uh, Shannon. But Keith, hey, welcome, man. Busy week. Uh, for you, for sure, huh? Absolutely, but exciting, you know, getting getting student athletes back in town and, and getting them over in, in the Manning Center for testing. And, um, you know, I was over there really a, a few times this week, and it was just nice to see some activity in the building, you know. Um, yeah. and you just tell the student athletes are ready to be back. They're ready to, to be back with their coaches and back in their, their familiar settings, you know, where they can – work out and, and just do all the things that they love to do. And the reasons that they came to Ole Miss, obviously, to play a sport and get a great education. But uh, you can tell there's some excitement and uh, some momentum, candidly. You know, I think things are, are, are going really well. Um, you kind of touched on the fact that we, we did, you know, end up with a couple of positive cases, uh, which we knew would happen. And, um, you know, I, I think that, that Shannon and, and his team and all the, the doctors from UMMC and you know, everyone that's helped from, from that standpoint, we, we just had a great plan in place. You know, we were able to isolate those people and do some contact tracing and, and make sure that, you know, that, that it wasn't affecting others. And, um, you know, again, I think it, it proves that our plan was a really good one. And, uh, you know, so we're excited. We, we hated that, that we had those confirmed cases and certainly we'll, we'll take care of those people. But um, again, we were prepared for that. We knew that, you know, the folks from UMMC felt like, that, uh, you know, bringing back four or 500 people that we were going to have some confirmed cases, and, and obviously we have. So, and, and we probably will have a few more. Um, but we've just got to continue to push forward and, and use our protocols and, and be safe. And, uh, you know, I know Shannon and his team will do that for sure. Yeah, and our discussion with him that we'll hear a little bit later in, in Rev Talk was just incredible with the pre-planning and stuff going on, uh, you know, to take care of possible uh, COVID-19 positive tests and, how to, you know, prevent others from getting it uh, and all. You, you know, one of the things, too, Keith, I saw the, the picture that was tweeted of the people all in their protective gear that are working this for you guys. Man, that's a bunch of folks and look like uh, they're very determined to help Ole Miss Athletics to have a safe reentry. Yeah, we, we can't thank the folks from UMMC enough. I mean, they've just been tremendous. Um, really, from the, from the first call, you know, Shannon made down there um, to, to the actual testing. Um, you know, they brought a lot of staff and uh, some, some students that helped out as well. And, and so, um, you know, I actually went over and, and got my testing done on Monday and it was, it was seamless and smooth and, um, you know, just, just professional, you know, and I think that's important. You know, you got student athletes that are coming back that have some anxiety. Shoot, I, I had some anxiety about taking the test, you know, uh, kind of what you hear and, and all that. But they were very professional and, and uh, you know, really can't thank them enough for, for their support and their help. And, and obviously, we know that moving forward, uh, we're going to need to lean on them as well. You know, in, our, in athletics, social distancing is difficult because we like to hug on each other and high five and all this stuff. And so, you know, it, it's kind of an awkward deal, I would think, at this point with the student athletes. But just to see them, you know, within six feet, that's pretty cool to, to get them back on campus and see them walking around. Yeah, no question. No question. You know, I know the, the coaches have been – uh, and our, our staff have been really good with the educational sessions and, and talking about what we, we should and shouldn't do. And, uh, you know, again, it, it, if, you're, if you're 18 to 22 years old and, and you're a college student, um, you know, you, want, you haven't seen your friends and, and your teammates in, in several months. I mean, you want to spend time with them. You want to mm -hmm. revisit and, and, and get, to, get to know them again, you know. Um, so what we've talked a lot about, hey, we want you to do that. We're glad that you're back. But we got to do it in a responsible way, and and certainly when we're in our buildings, we're wearing masks. We're, you know, we're we're doing the things that we need to do. Again, and and I think that you know, with with the positive cases we had, 
you know, those individuals were, were in our buildings and, and doing some things. But I think because of the protocols, we were able to kind of isolate those incidents and, and move forward. And, and, and I think that's what's important uh, and that we continue to educate our student athletes, our staff, um, that we got to do things the right way. We really only get one shot at this. The isolation units, I guess you call them, are great for the student athletes. They're going to be, you know, it's not like we're going to throw them over there and just <laughs> say, you know, stay away for, for, uh, for two weeks. They're going to be taken care of in, in the right way. And, and then I understand staff members are uh, going to quarantine at home. That's right. That's right. And obviously, you know, like you said, we don't want to just put them over there and, and forget about them. We're going to make sure we're getting food and attention over there and, uh, you know, making sure that every day that they're feeling okay. And um, certainly we'll have all the resources there. And again, I, I've said it a hundred times, but I, I can't emphasize how, how great of a job Shannon and his team have done really from step one to step a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know that they'll continue to, to take care of our students and our staff and uh, really proud of that effort. Well, and a lot of future things you're working on, too, with Shannon, as I talk to him, you know, as, as we try to get back into normality with fans coming back to games and all those things that are around the corner, hopefully uh, having the Grove in some capacity and all those things that we love to do. Yeah, you know, there, there's still a ton of unanswered questions. You know, I think that uh, one thing I've learned about this process with COVID, and it's, it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. And, you know, you have to you have to accomplish some things and move forward. And, and again, I feel like we've done a tremendous job of focusing on our student athletes and our staff, making sure that there's a safe and healthy way for them to return to campus. Um, I think once we kind of get through this wave here over the next week or so, um, then we're really going to dive into to other very important things, which is you know, what, what does our stadium look like? We've, we've already had you know, those, those discussions and started those discussions, but really diving into that, um, you know, what does the Grove look like? What does um, you know, what, what does our stadium look like if we have 25%, 50%, 75%? Um, there's just a lot of things that, that are going to have to be discussed. And, you know, again, the, the information is changing every day, and, and it's very, very fluid. But we want to be proactive and ahead of, of all those scenarios and, and have them planned for. All right, let's talk some scheduling stuff. There's been some news since the last time we talked to you. Got a home and home with South Alabama in football, basketball. Couple of big ones there, uh, home and home and men's basketball with Dayton, home and home with Kansas and women's basketball. So uh, those are good matchups, sound like. Yeah, you know, scheduling is is really a lot of fun, and and I think for for basketball, and I've mentioned this before, you know, a lot of times that's led kind of by the coaches and their staff, and maybe some relationships that they have, and um, those are more kind of current current time. You know, they're usually a year or two in advance, and that's the most. Um, and I, I love the matchups, you know, Coach Yo with the matchup with Kansas, that's going to be really cool. Obviously, a, a brand name that'll be coming to the, to the pavilion and, and, and we'll be going there. That's exciting. And, you know, Dayton is a team that we've played in the past. You know, when AK was here, we played them a few times, uh, played them in the NIT one year and actually did a, a home and home with them uh, in the past as well. Uh, great program, really good program. One of those um, kind of mid-majors that's, that's really, really good, you know, for us. It fits what we need from an RPI standpoint and, uh, you know, trying to play a, a tougher non-conference. you got Memphis on the schedule this year as well. And then in football, you know, I guess I've got a little pushback in some ways on, on the home and home with South Alabama. But, you know, just to explain it, you know, it, it comes down to really kind of a financial decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times when you're guaranteeing – so if, if we paid South Alabama to come to our place – uh, you know, we're paying them at least $1.5 million, maybe all the way up to $2 million to do that. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to sprinkle in a couple of group of five home and homes. You know, obviously, we're not going to do that every year, but every 10 years, maybe a couple of those and, and go to cool places. Mobile is a place that we know we have a lot of, of Ole Miss Rebels and uh, great for recruiting and, and a cool destination for our fans to go to. They have a brand new stadium, which is really, really cool. Um, and then again, in that, in that given year, you know, it's going to save us around $2 million of, of a guarantee that we can put toward other things. Uh, we got another matchup that we'll announce hopefully here in the coming days, another cool destination with a group of five for a home and home. Uh, and we'll continue to look for those strategically along the way. But uh, I think it'll be good. And Coach Kiffin's on board. Uh, Tom Kleinlein has been really good since he's been here overseeing football, helping us with scheduling. So um, the football schedule, again, is a big jigsaw puzzle, and it just it, it takes a lot of work. We're scheduling games. You know, we've got games 15 years out right now, which is crazy to even think about. But uh, it's fun, and, and uh, it's, it's fun to work on those matchups. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is amazing that football is so far out there. I'm hoping I make it to some of those now. I'm getting on up there. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it was funny. You know, we, uh, I, I do, uh, there's a lunch group in Oxford that meets out at the country club every Thursday. And I go out from time to time and speak to that group. And, and to, be, to be honest and in full disclosure, it's a lot of older gentlemen. And uh, one day I was in there and I was talking to him about some of our matchups. And I think Virginia Tech, like we have them on there for like 20, 35 or 37 yeah. or something like that. And I, I mentioned that and there was a chuckle around the room like, well, we may not see that game, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but, but you have to, David. You, you yeah. have to, have to kind of work that far in advance, you know, with the mandate from the SEC that we have the, the extra power five opponent. Uh, it's so important to get those on the schedule. Then you start working around those with your other matchups for the non-conference. But uh, it's fun. And, uh, you know, we want to continue to, to bring cool matchups. Obviously, the USC matchup. Uh, we actually have another uh, Power 5 matchup as well that we'll announce hopefully here in the coming weeks. So uh, a lot of activity around scheduling in, in the last few weeks. Hey, we want to encourage our fans, too. I know there's a lot of mystery about, you know, how we're going to do this when we get ready to, to – fire back up in the fall but but you know get your tickets and take care of that I know we got a deadline uh coming up Keith and we don't really encourage them not to get discouraged about uh you know continue to support Ole Miss athletics absolutely you know June 15th is our deadline we pushed it back to give folks some more time to kind of assess their personal situation to get more information as we are about if we're actually going to play um but here's the deal we, we would love for folks to to go ahead and renew um, we, you know, if for some reason we don't play football or if there's a reduced schedule, we will adjust and we will make people whole, similar to what we did with the baseball season ticket holders with refunds and opportunities to move donations forward to next year and, and those type of things. So um, I don't want people to feel like they're going to they're gonna buy in and, and not see value, you know, if we don't play this year um, because they, they will. They won't, they won't lose that. So, um, but my gut tells me, David, we're going to play football. It mm -hmm. really does. And, you know, I think we're going to be there in, in September. I do think that there's still some questions around what do our stadiums look like, how many people are going to be in there. Um, but I think every day we're getting more information, uh, and hopefully we can start making some decisions on that as well in, in the future. Keith, also, there's been a lot of statements made about the issue we got going on nationally with the racism and the, you know, the horrible video we saw with Floyd and, uh, just just crazy stuff, and there's been a lot of good statements out there. I thought yours was exceptional, and ours is backed at Ole Miss, obviously, with action, too, and we've done a lot of things in the past already to combat uh, racism, but it uh, doesn't mean we're perfect. doesn't mean there's more things that can't be done, but uh, really appreciate your statement. Well, you know, I, I think you hit it on the head. A statement is one thing, and, and I think those things are needed, but then the action that follows is what really matters, you know? And I think for us, uh, we've had some really uh, good and raw internal conversations um, mm -hmm. and as we talked about action as we move forward. Um, you know, for us, we, we've, we've got we've to do something, and we've got to make sure that uh, we're intentional about this action, you know? Um, I think what we've seen in the past, David, to be very candid is, you know, these moments of, of, of flare-ups and, and everyone gets fired up and we want to do the right thing. But then when things calm down, we kind of go back to the status quo. Right. And for us, we're going to be committed in Ole Miss Athletics that we're going we're gonna to take action. You know, we're going to do things that are proactive. And, um, you know, we want Ole Miss and, and Oxford to, to be a safe place. We want our student athletes and our staff to feel very comfortable here. And we want them to know that the administration is listening and that we're paying attention. And so um, I'm committed to that. I know our staff is committed to that. Um, and I hope that our student athletes know that uh, we're going to fight for them and, and we want them to feel comfortable. So uh, just some horrific things that have been, been happening around our country. Um, but I, I, you know, it, it's hard to use the word opportunity in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we have an opportunity here to do some things that can help change the future. No doubt. Well put. Hey, each week I, when I get you on, I get you to talk about other oh, guests. You've already talked about Shannon. We got Shannon, and, you know, Shannon so busy, it's almost impossible to talk to him, period, right now. But uh, Randy Clem is coming up next, offensive line coach. We've met all these new football coaches with the relaunch of, of Rev Talk. And uh, I think he's – I believe he's going to do a tremendous job for Lane Kiffin. I do too. You know, the, the thing about Randy, and, and I'll be honest, I don't know Randy as well yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know him a little better. But what I've noticed about him early on is that he's a football guy. You know, yeah. he, he is a football guy from Texas. And, um, you know, he, he's going to come in with a hard-nosed approach. And, um, you know, I, I'm kind of a wimpy little basketball guy. But we all know that, that, that in football it starts in the trenches. 
Right. And and certainly, you know, Randy's going to do a great job with, with that offensive line and um, look forward to, again, getting to know him better personally, but watching him, you know, work with our young men to, to make that team better. All right, thank you, Keith. Appreciate you. Absolutely, DK. Have a good day. All right, you too, man. Randy Clements from Ole Miss Football is next on Ripley. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with smart choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smart choice MS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Welcome back to Reb Talk. David Callum here with you as we have another edition of Reb Talk this week. And we're going to visit now with Randy Clements, his assistant coach, running game coordinator, and offensive line coach. And it's uh, good to be able to visit. Uh, with him, 30-year coaching veteran who's joined this staff, one of the new faces at Ole Miss, not only in football, but the many other areas that we've seen here recently. He spent uh, 10 years with uh, Coach Jeff Levy, uh, and so they're here together at Ole Miss, and prior to this year, he was at FSU as offensive line coach in Houston a couple of stints in 2018. They had a phenomenal year offensively, their fifth in the nation. Uh, with 512 yards of total offense. They scored nearly 44 points a game. He was at Baylor, of course, for a long time, too, and had a, a great run there. And they actually led the nation offensively back in 2013, won the Big 12 championship for the first time in school uh, history. So uh, a lot of stops. You know, one of the things I noticed on your bio, though, and you can correct me if this is wrong, too, but uh, you were at Stevensville, Texas High School and I coached was. there, got a start there. and. Uh, one of the things I noticed was you you took the powerlifting team to a state title. That's got to be cool. Yeah, uh, I've always I've always loved the weight room, you know, and it kind of goes hand in hand with with being a line coach, you know. Um, but um, you know that was uh, that, you know usually when you coach in high school, you got to have a second sport, and that happened to be my second sport. And um, you know we had a not just me, but a group of coaches, including our head coach, um, that was. Uh, you know, super committed to the weight room. And um, so, you know, those things worked out well. And, um, you know, it uh, helped us in football quite a bit, I, I would uh, venture to say. In uh, 
2001, they won the state championship. He's from Wichita Falls, Texas, originally, and uh, played at Tyler, Texas Junior College, transferred to Stephen F. Austin. He and his wife, Polly, have two children, Jordan and Jason. Jason played at uh, Baylor. Um, and we're glad to have you in Oxford. How, how is the – have you gotten settled in pretty much, I guess, now here in Oxford? Yeah, everybody uh, – everybody's been great. You know, we've uh, – we got us a little house out just outside of town and, um, you know um, – uh, one of the reasons I came here was just how friendly everybody was and how welcoming uh, everybody was. And, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, excited and glad to be here for sure. Talk about your background, Coach Levy, and, uh, you know, joining this staff. One of the things I've, I've thought about this staff, well, there's some incredible coaches on this particular staff. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's, that's another reason, uh, a big reason why I decided to come because uh, – I was excited with the opportunity and what we had to build here. Um, but, you know, I worked with Jeff for a long time. Uh, I've known him since he was probably 11 years old. Um, you know, his dad was a high school coach and me coaching in high school. Um, you know, we were all connected. Uh, my, my boss was Art Bryles and uh, his dad and, uh, and Art were great friends. And uh, we just got to know each other, you know, over the years. And, when we got to Baylor, um, you know, Jeff was my GA. He's starting out, and um, you know that happened for a couple of years, and then he worked himself into a full-time assistant. And then, uh, you know, we've uh, we've been together a couple of stops there. Um, we were at that uh, Southeastern uh, in Florida together uh, after we left Baylor, and we had a good time there. But like I said, a lot of long bus rides. But uh, you know, <laughs> had fun. Did a, did a good uh, did a good job. And we're pretty productive, uh, really. Um, so. Uh, uh, that was fun, but uh, love working with Jeff. Uh, we think a lot alike, and um, you know it's kind of uh, you know it's easy to do things whenever people are thinking the same way you are, and uh, we're both pretty familiar with uh, with the way each other one uh, thinks. And now you're locked in with Lane Kiffin, who's considered one of the best you know offensive minds in the country. He's got a you know ton of success at different places and all. Uh, what's it been like uh, being with Lane here? Oh, Lane's great. Um, you know, he allows his coaches to coach, which is important uh, for me. And at the same time, uh, he's got uh, great ideas and great contributions from a lot of experiences at a lot of great places. And, uh, you know, having a great background with his his family, his dad and, um, you know, his brother. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, that's that's another one of the big reasons that I uh, chose to come here because, uh, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, Lane's he's, he's had proven success where he's been. And, you um, you know, multiple stops, and uh, I'm looking forward to that happening here. We're visiting with Randy Clement, assistant coach for Ole Miss, and uh, dealing with the offensive line. Got the players back on campus this week. I know they're going this week through all the tests and everything, and then next week and start doing conditioning and, and that kind of stuff. It, it, I, I would imagine it's got to be a little bit refreshing, know that maybe we're getting back to, to some degree of normal, huh, Randy? Yeah, I mean, just during all this – uh, you know, stuff with, you know, what's been going on um, in in uh, the cities today and then with all the COVID stuff, you know, you're just – you're praying for normal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're just trying to get back to a routine because, you know, being around athletics and being around student athletes and, uh, you know, it started back when you were an athlete yourself. Uh, you just lived by your routine, you know, and it was just, uh, you know, just how you, you got things done. You don't feel like you – almost like you can't be productive without it, you know. So we're we're hungry to get back into it and, um, you know, hungry to make some progress and get ready for this next season. When you got here, I know you guys kind of lost the opportunity to spend a whole lot of time with the returning players. And the spring, of course, went kind of belly up on us as well. But I know you, you, you've met your guys and talked to them, had some experience with them. How do you feel about uh, the offensive line as a whole and its potential and – uh, you know, being able to, to build some degree of depth. I feel really good. Um, you know, these guys, uh, they can play. Um, you know, now we have some holes to fill from last year. Um, but, you know, I've been really encouraged by what I've seen on film from them. Uh, you know, they were very productive last year, led the league uh, in rushing in the SEC West, which, you know, is tough to do. And uh, so that's that's really impressive. And, you uh, you know, I'm excited to, to work with them. At the same time, I'm excited to, you know, bring, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, what I have to offer uh, to them. And, um, 
you know, I'm just just looking forward to it. You, you think about Ben Brown being back and uh, Royce Newman, Jalen Cunningham, and the list kind of goes on and on. Um, you would think there'd be pretty good competition in that group too, Randy. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of separation maybe with the experienced guys and the young guys mm -hmm. uh, in our room, you know. Um, but, you know, those young guys, they're going to have to be counted on too, you know, and that's uh, one thing that we have to do is, you know, we have to spur them along to get them in position where they're ready to contribute because, A, you know, uh, competition makes them all better and then B, uh, you know, it's always going to be a scenario that arises where we're going to have to play, you know, more than five guys. So, um, you know, we just – we got to prepare for that, and that's one of the things we got to do is develop these young guys and get them ready for prime time. You know, one of the returning players, it, it, a lot of times, you know, these things get personal. And Eli Johnson's dad, David, who is in my world, you know, reporter, mm -hmm. uh, had to go through the COVID-19, was pretty much on deathbed is what they had said, and he fought through it, and he's still fighting, but he's uh, come out the other side to some degree. And uh, I, I know that's got to make it, kind of personal for you guys in the offensive line. Yeah, um, that was a tough deal for them and their family. And still, you know, he's still, like you said, recovering from it. Um, but, you know, um, you know, me and Eli, we had some good talks, you know, and uh, during that time. And, you know, one of the things I can remember, Eli said basically they were giving his dad a 5% chance to live. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were telling him to kind of prepare for the worst. And I remember the last thing I said, and I think Coach Kiffin said the same thing to him, is that, you know, hey, there's still a chance. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep hoping. You got to keep praying. And, uh, you know, I'll be dang if it didn't uh, come out this way, you know. So uh, that just that just shows you, you know, um, no matter how things look, no matter how they sound, um, as long as you're, you know, in the fight, uh, you got a chance, you know. So that's a great lesson for all of us to learn. And, you uh, you know, pretty inspiring, really. And um, I know uh, I know Eli has come out of it stronger. You know, I, I can just sense he feels like he can pretty much take on anything at this point, you know what I'm saying, because that was, that was pretty rough. And to be able to come through that and the way he did, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of him. Yeah, no doubt. Really, really, really great story. And uh, can't wait to see David again and see him writing about you guys. He writes nice stuff since his son plays for you, so you yeah. ought to be protected, right? <laughs> Well, let's hope. Hopefully, we give him some good stuff to write about. That's what we're playing. <laughs> what is the key to the offensive lineman in in this particular offense? And you know, the, you used to have the big old guys that just kind of held people off or pushed people around, and now, you know, athleticism is so much more important in the offensive line. It seems than it used to be. Well, um, you know, being an up tempo style offense for one. Um, you know, you have to be able to go, you know, 80, 90, maybe even 100 plus snaps in a game, you know. And um, that's not easy on somebody that weighs over 300 pounds, you know. So um, there takes a lot of training into that and it takes a lot of toughness into that, you know. And the thing is, you know, we don't want our tempo to be a gimmick. Uh, we want it to be a weapon. And um, in order for it to be a weapon, we have to be able to, to execute it with, you know, great technique and, um, you know, great focus and attention to detail. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, going to be constantly working on that. You know, we hadn't got to work with it just a ton yet because, like I said, or like you said, uh, we hadn't had much time. Um, but, um, you know, I think uh, these guys are very open-minded. Uh, they're, they're trying to embrace everything we're telling them. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just excited to work with them and see what they can do. Yeah, should be an interesting season, too. Hey, who's that first team on that schedule we got coming up? <laughs> uh, I think their name is Waco. I think it is. Uh, uh, they, they'll, uh, I'm sure they'll be ready. You know, Coach Aranda, he's no stranger to the, this league and, and this team. So, uh, I'm sure he'll have a good plan in place and have those guys ready to play. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have to have our best foot forward for sure. But, uh, oh, it'd be, it'd be uh, pretty sweet to go down there and get a, get a win in my home state for sure. No doubt. You know, Randy, one thing about uh, the state of Texas too, through the years, Ole Miss has had a lot of success recruiting wise, and we've pulled some really good players out of the state and 
Uh, I don't know if it's the SEC attracts as much as the closeness or whatever, but uh, some really good receivers and, and different things. So your connection to the state, I would think uh, you're kind of glad that Ole Miss has had a footprint there for a while. Yeah, um, you know, and we're trying to, you know, kind of keep that going and reestablish that, so to speak. Um, you know, it's been tough because, you know, being a new staff, we had to concentrate on the current signing class we had, so we couldn't really reach out as much to the, the you know, 2021 class uh, like we want to. So we're a little bit behind. Uh, we would have probably caught up this spring had we been able to go out. But, um, you know, there's other people in the same boat we are. So we're just, uh, you know, whenever the time comes, we'll make sure we, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can over the phone and on these video meetings and all that stuff. But when the time comes, uh, you know, we're going to hit it pretty hard out that way because there's a lot of good players and coaches out that way. Coach Clements, thank you so much. Appreciate the visit. And uh, we look forward to seeing the offensive line come together and gel. And I know you're looking forward to getting a little hands-on action with them too. <laughs> well, I appreciate the opportunity to – to talk and uh yeah we're we're excited about it and looking forward to, to the future for sure we'll continue the rep talk just a moment shannon singletary is going to give us an update on how these students are getting back on campus that's next in sports success is measured in the number of points scored in games won and in championships earned at shelter insurance we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, nine out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend shelter to a friend. To find out how shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield, we're your shelter. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice middle on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OldMissTix.com. That's OldMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Rev Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, we're back on Rev Talk, our third segment this week, and uh, we're excited to have Shannon Singletary with us again. We had a really good visit with Shannon earlier uh, when we re cranked up Rev Talk, and of course, he's the senior associate AD for health and sports performance. and we got the great news last week that the student athletes are going to be able to come back, not only football players, but others. Uh, and testing started this week and uh, beginning the 8th, I believe is when they can turn them over to the coaches to some degree, the strength coaches and all. And so we're, we just want kind of an update from Shannon and his staff. And Shannon, I want to start with this great picture of all the staff 
decked out in the you know the the protection device stuff and all the uh, paraphernalia and I know you tweeted it out and it was really cool to see that many people uh, obviously involved in in making this safe and, and and a good deal yeah it really was let me just say you know I've done a lot of interviews and and I just want everybody to understand that this by no uh, means of the imagination should it be uh, Shannon's plan at all. I tell you what, it's just been a team effort. Um, our athletic trainers have just, I mean, put together a plan. We got it approved for all the physicals and the testing and how we were going to walk through the building and stay socially distanced all the way to the medical center, uh, sent a team up three days before so that we could walk through it just for the testing piece of COVID-19. Um, and so, um, I'm just very, uh, very proud to be a part of the University of Mississippi and being associated with the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Uh, it's just been a great team effort. But the first day went really, really good, David. Well, that's good. And we talked about the plan way back. And you know, I, I visited with others, talked to Marshall, in fact, last week, Dr. Crowther. Uh, and, and, and so did you kind of stick to what you, you thought the plan would be as they start rolling back in here? We really did. You know, it, it took place 72 hours before they even landed on campus, if you will. Uh, 72 hours before our trainer started calling each one of those athletes and going through a series of questions and, and just talking about had they been sick, had they been around anybody with COVID-19, where had they traveled the last three months. Now, as a result of that, um, uh, some players were delayed uh, coming because we wanted them to get tested at home before they came here. So um, the protocol is working in sense of keeping some back that needed to be held back, but now they're on, they're on their way. And, uh, and then when they got here, they had to be screened once again at the door and given a nice mask, <laughs> temperature check, same screening questions again, then they advanced to the next room in the indoor facility. So just had it laid out all over the indoor football field that we have, the Manning Center, and uh, they went from station to station. You may have seen some pictures on the internet yesterday, uh, but the testing process with UMC, uh, went smooth. Uh, we should be starting to get some results in uh, as early as tonight and tomorrow morning. So uh, we, we'll be looking looking forward to that. And then no matter what that result is, um, we've got a, a plan in place to, to take that action. Show me your mask. It looks like it's got old Miss on it there, huh? <laughs> well, this one made like this. And so it can, you know, shape to my nose and tuck up under my chin. And, you know, it's comfortable and, you know, we gave them to all the players, and then, you know, they can wear them all over the building. And then when they go into the weight room, um, or if they go outside and they have to run and they had to get some air, they can pull it down, and then they can pull it right back up and, get you know, uh, get a little closer, you know, within, uh, or, or right at six feet from each other. So, yeah, we're happy with them. <laughs> they look good. I got to give you one of those. Hold me one of those. <laughs> you got it. We'll get you one. I know you got to gotta wear one. You're hanging out with them, too. Hey, you, you mentioned kind of – I don't want to say worst case scenario, but there are scenarios. And, and I know that you in pre-planning looked at, you know, what if a player would get here, gets it or has it. And how do you deal with that? I talked to Marshall last week a little bit about, uh, you know, plans for that, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. If you even deal with that, is it? Oh, no, you're, you're exactly right. And if you take a look at the testing, I believe Mississippi's positivity rate. So of all the people they've been testing, how many people are positive? And I believe that's around 8% or so. Mm -hmm. And so if you took the 150 that we did between staff and players yesterday, 8% uh, of that, you know, we, we could have, you know, eight, nine players. Doesn't mean that we will. Um, but if that is the case, David, then what we would do, we already have an uh, isolation quarters for them where they can, can go and live. Uh, obviously they'll be checked out by the docs to make sure they're not symptomatic or, you know, they shouldn't have to go to the hospital, but if they did, we have that plan. But we would begin to isolate them, monitor their symptoms, and uh, unfortunately, though, um, as the plan is laid out and recommended, they would be isolated uh, for two weeks away from the team. So, um, but you know what? If we, I told the teams yesterday, I told the coaches yesterday, here's the deal. If we keep socially distanced in the building, we wear our masks like we're supposed to, we're using our hand sanitizer like we're supposed to, uh, in around the building in meeting rooms or whatever, then what we should be able to do is isolate that one person, make sure we have the close contacts, work with the Mississippi Department of Health to determine who actually is a close contact 
They may need to be quarantined for a couple of weeks as well. But you know what? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to shut down the whole team mm -hmm. because we've been socially distanced. We've been doing things right, right? But it could have been a roommate or it could have been a family member that came into contact. So we're just hoping to really – um, really teach our players and educate our players. They went through education all day again today because we can't start working out till June the 8th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so each day we've got education planned for them to really get them ready. Um, and so the plan is, is that we should be able to identify, isolate them, identify their uh, close contacts and make sure they're quarantined like they're supposed to and self monitor and then get through that period and then get back out. Yeah, and we're doing this a little bit before it launches on a Thursday. And so you'll have a little bit more information over the next uh, uh, day or two. But let me ask you about coordination with uh, um, Wilson Love and the rest of the strength staff. You know, if I'm a player and I, I've checked out clean, tests are great, uh, then you just kind of hand them over to them to some degree, I guess, right? Well, to some degree. And we've even, like, literally had dress rehearsals where we went into the locker room and actually saw where they would be dressed. Or, you know, now all the lockers are spread out three, uh, three lockers apart just about. Mm -hmm. Some lockers are blocked off. Um, and so we were showing the players where they were dressed, where they would literally take their laundry, how they go into the weight room, and when they get in there with Wilson's staff, their staff have masks on. They know how to spot. They'll be spotting from the ends of the bar versus right behind them in close contact with them. Uh, still where they can safely make sure that they can get that weight back up to where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. if they're squatting. But, yeah, so if, they're, if they are um, negative, everything's clean there, they're healthy, they've checked out the other parts of the physical, and then Wilson staff gets them, and he starts working them out voluntarily as well. How often uh, throughout the summer will you continue to test them? Is it a daily thing or a periodic thing? Or No, so, you know um, – Basically, the guidelines and recommendations uh, from the experts around the country is that there's, there's probably some value into screening them when they first get here. Then what you want to do is make sure, as of today, as we speak, everything's fluid, right? <laughs> as of today, as we speak, you want to make sure that you've got vast and, 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 and enough quantities of tests available for those that do become symptomatic mm -hmm. or they come in close contact with somebody that is. So right now, we're still developing our plans. You know, some people, some experts out there saying maybe you should take a 10% sample size of all of your teams and just as randomly check a sample size of, mm -hmm. of, of all of your sports. That's one method. There are some people out there throwing around the idea of testing midweek, testing after the ball game. All of that is still fluid. There is no... Um, consensus on that right now and that's what dr crowther man he is excellent he's really following the literature and he got off a call late last night uh with about 14 other team doctors uh, from all over the country about their opinions on testing and i can just tell you right now methodology and the best protocol for testing is going to be about another month or so away before we really know the best ways to to use that shannon what are you telling the players when they leave your facility, it'd be like, it'd be nice to lock them down and know they're not going to experience the rest of Oxford. We've been very fortunate in our town. I think Robin and the people, and you know, have just done a great job of, of, of keeping Oxford. Okay. I know there's a balance between the economy and all of those things she's having to fight and deal with, but the numbers are, are look pretty good as far as the rest of the state. But what are you telling the players when they leave the facility, you know, don't get together, throw a party and all those kind of things, but what are the instructions to them? That's right. Uh, well, David, we, again, are part of the educational sessions uh, all, ongoing all this week. Pat Jernigan, our head trainer, just had one with the football team just a little bit ago. And basically what he's telling them is, is that when you leave our doors, hey, it doesn't stop. COVID doesn't stop right there. And so um, they're teaching them that even when you are uh, in social gatherings, we're going to follow the Oxford guidelines as well as the Mississippi guidelines, but you should limit yourself to 10 people or less and she, you should be socially distanced. Um, and we're just really strongly encouraging that. We're also teaching them, we went back to the very basics about washing their hands, not just mm -hmm. relying on hand sanitizer, but washing their hands, changing their clothes when they go back to their apartment. Uh, so they're here all day around people in the weight room or whatever, making sure we don't wear those same clothes home and just lay around on the couches and watch TV. Uh, more frequently doing laundry. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked to them about that. Uh, and then just main thing is that, hey, 
we've got to make sure we protect the team, protect each other, and protect the community. And the best way to do that is to wear a mask when we're inside, stay six feet apart, and use hand sanitizer as much as we can. Just drill it. Yeah, just keep drilling it. Yeah, I get that. Here's the thing. It's about mitigating the risk, right? And so even if we teach them one or two or three interventions that they employ, that still cuts down on the risk. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be absolutely perfect when we leave the facilities here, but we know that if we can instill in them one, two, or three, six feet apart, wash my hands, wear my mask when I can, hey, you've already mitigated a lot of the risk. Right, right. Uh, before I let you go, tell me a little bit about another hat you're wearing, and that's uh, interaction with the university. I know you've been on that committee and talking about the reopening of the school a little bit uh, later down the road. How's that gone, and what's some of the discussion there? Well, um, so there's uh, – may have talked about this before, but now we have formed subcommittees. Uh, I'm chairing the one that's uh, about reopening athletics, but then I'm on some others, the Parameters and Guidelines Committee, in which we are trying to make – uh, some structure and, and a manual, if you will, for all the units on campus. So they're kind of like a playbook so that when their staffs open it up, they know how to handle what kind of operations look like, uh, students on campus. Um, I tell you, there, uh, Provost uh, Wilkin, uh, the chancellor, uh, all the vice chancellors, they're working very hard. And one of the biggest things they're working very hard at is, um, you know, really trying to come up with the best plan for bringing back all of our students mm -hmm. and figuring out, excuse me, figuring out what a uh, classroom space looks like. Do you teach more sessions? Do you have some classes outside? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you really maybe one day a week, maybe it's a zoom, maybe, maybe the other two it's on, it's your face to face, that kind of thing. You mentioned outside. I think my, my most favorite class at Ole Miss was a theater class that we took basically in the Grove. We had a professor that, much want to be outside more so than inside. And so we just hung out at the picnic tables out there, had a good time. You may see some more of that. You're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot more walking classes. Remember mm -hmm. when uh, you used to see them classes walking through Faulkner Woods, you know, behind baseball. Uh, right, right. So you're going to start to see people thinking outside the box. And, and you know, I don't think so. I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think there's going to be a lot of good come out of this if we can just get, to the other side of that, you know, we're, we're all trying to get to that point that makes us feel, you know, a little more normal and, and uh, what we used to feel like. Uh, and then let me say this to um, Keith uh, has charged uh, a task force within the subcommittee of really looking hard at um, the stadium and what mm -hmm. it looks like. We, we've been going through that process today. We had a two hour meeting and really trying to figure out, you know, what, what that looks like. And so, uh, everybody's working hard trying to get their players back to competing and practicing, getting our fans back uh, and creating that atmosphere that we all have come to, to love. I told Dr. Crowler, I said, or I asked him, I said, you got that vaccine ready yet? I mean, you know, <laughs> he said, you know, <laughs> that will be a game changer when we get that solved. <laughs> well, let me tell you, he's very humble whenever you talk to Dr. Crowther, but I just, again, I can't say enough about him. He is, you've been on road trips with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is a hoot. He is, he loves sports. He, I told him he's like a walking encyclopedia because he ha has so much knowledge about sports. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, when he, when he gets really focused on something like this right here, I can ask him, where are we on this? What is, what is the latest? And I mean, he's rattling it off. Mm -hmm. um, so um, he, matter of fact, he just sent me an article uh, about um, how military bases are handling um, military units uh, and the Marines and the army and the air force because uh, they're going through the same thing, right? Mm -hmm, right. Uh, and so I can't wait to read it. It's pretty long, so I'm going to read it tonight, get together and discuss it with him and see how we can use those ideas here. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Well, hey, listen, we sure appreciate you and the staff and everybody. I know that uh, this wasn't what you signed up for years ago, but here it is, I guess. But it is really exciting, I know, for all Ole Miss fan base to, to know that we've got kids back on campus. Well, I'll tell you what, you know um, – I'll end with this too, you know, it, it is somewhat, I appreciate you saying that, it is somewhat what we've signed up for, you've been here a very long time, nobody knew what was going to happen when Chucky went down. Right. And because of that, uh, the policies that Leroy put in place after that, we built on those, 
I just think, you know, there's a reason for everything. And, and we're going to be able to build on this. We're going to make the next generation better. And they're going to mm-hmm. know how to handle this. Uh, and so, um, you know, looking back, Doc Knight, Leroy, and now this generation, um, things happen. You know, you get into medicine and there's no playbook. It's art. You know? Yeah. It's not well, an that's a great art. quote. That's a great quote. It is art. It really is. Hey, thanks so much. You still running yourself? You staying in shape? Man, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm running one day, biking the next day. So maybe 30 miles a week on my feet, maybe uh, a little over 100 on the bike. So uh, still a lot of fun. It's, it's a good, good way to kind of relieve some stress and, and just get out and get away. Mary and I are trying to find a bike. You can't even buy one in Oxford. They're all sold out. <laughs> I tell you what, I, uh, when I got into road biking, um, I had a buddy of mine. He found me one. I mean, a great, great brand and really great bike. And what was even better is like 350 bucks or something. And so uh, I told my wife the other day that $350 bike has now turned into a $1,000 bike really in a hurry because I've added a lot of stuff to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be top notch, doesn't it? Sure, hey, Shannon, you. thank you so much. Uh, we look forward to hooking up with you again maybe later on, see, see how it's going. Okay, thanks a lot, David. Okay, Shannon Singletary joining us here. That'll wrap up this week's edition of Rev Talk. We'll see you next week.